I just come out of character here. I don't know who to go into, baby. Who are you? <laughs> I remember. It's very nice to see you here. Chris Barry. You aren't normally where you're going to talk. Chris Barry, world famous impersonator. Very nice to have you in both of us. It's a wonderful opportunity, really, Chris, to have you here because it means that I can now go to bed sort of, so to speak, with all the people I've always wanted to go to bed, but we haven't actually been able to get on Pillow Talk, all those famous celebrities who've actually said no to the program. I can now have them in bed with me in, in the shape of you. It's quite an exciting prospect, isn't it, Chris? It all depends who you want. <laughs> I, I very much doubt you'd want someone like me, would you? <laughs> I very much doubt I'd want to be here either, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> who was that one? Um, Roger Moore. <laughs> The person, of course, that I have always wanted to go to bed with, and there just isn't a hope in hell, let's be honest about it, is Prince Charles. Could you, could you oblige? What is one supposed to do in bed? <laughs> Sleep? <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. Don't, whatever you do, broach the, the subject about why it's working out the way it is. I mean, it's not my fault I like to read vegetarian restaurant guidebooks. Is that my fault, is it? Or what else are you supposed to do in bed? <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I ask you, sir, that the question that everybody, of course, is, is wanting to ask you... And when am I next going on a fishing trawl in Scotland, yes? No. <laughs> About you and your lady wife, Princess Diana. Is it as bad as they say? How's it all going? I must say, it's one of the most amazing courses of acting I've ever had to do in my life. <laughs> Hello, Di. We're getting on so extremely well, aren't we? <laughs> do you have, do you have showing the royal teeth for a change. <laughs> do you have problems with libel, Chris? Does it ever happen that, that, you, that you're not. caught saying the wrong things? Um, You've never been sued yet. Um, me, not not personally, no. Hang on, I'm extremely uncomfortable. Let me just get comfortable. That's um, not the idea. Get cosy. Um, yes, get extremely cosy. Um, not. Personally, as yet, no. But um, it's pretty imminent, though. I isn't think it? you know there that comes a happen. time in your life when you get. I mean, I've had problems with you know with motoring, for example. That happens at a stage in life, and I think you know problems with libel, particularly in the profession I'm in, might come along eventually. Yeah. To get back to these people I've always wanted to have in bed with me, Sean Connery is one of my big pinups, but he's not that easy to do. Can you can you do a Sean at all? Well, I think we're in uh, typical surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> because, you see, it always starts off that uh, he gets sent abroad. <laughs> and he guises as a transport consultant and ends up in Holland. <laughs> and suddenly, he finds a beautiful lady alone in a little bedsit in Amsterdam. <laughs> And very suddenly he finds that he has some time to kill. <laughs> and even more suddenly he discovers that there's a waiter outside <laughs> who he can say, champagne for two, I think, instead of the bourbon. <laughs> and then suddenly, I think I have some time to kill. <laughs> Imaginary watch. Am I'm unavailable. <laughs> and suddenly, just as the passion and intimacy starts to ride high. <laughs> a tarantula in Holland? <laughs> How true. When did you last work for Goldfinger? And so it goes on. Brilliant. Um, you, you, your, your sort of speciality is sporting people, isn't it? People like, is it David Coleman is one of the people that you do very well? Well, most people like to think it is. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon and welcome to the extraordinary event here in in bed. Uh, and the situation is this. Uh, things are riding... This is the big one. The extraordinary one. And away we go. We're going towards the box now. And... Uh, one nil. No, it's come out again. <laughs> Disaster for me. Uh, almost a classic, but it never worked. What extraordinary. Uh, and with that, for the post-coital activities, is over to Richie Beddo. It's a marvellous effort, that, by uh, David Coleman, but, uh, or whoever that was supposed to be. <laughs> Talk about libel. Uh, and whoever this is supposed to be. Uh, meanwhile, it's back to Emma Freud for the real post-coital... Uh, look at her. Oh, me already. Oh. What the hell did you say that for? But Sorry. Who was that last one? Um, an Irishman who saves people from getting out of extremely difficult situations. Ah, that's very useful. 
a nice one to have at your school. <sighs> Brian Clough is someone that Craig Charles has been begging me to ask you to do. And I have actually always wanted to go to bed with Brian Clough. I think a lot of women feel this way. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you're in bed with someone or something, you've got to do something with it. And I think, I think it's a man's job to do that. It's certainly my job. And I think whenever I'm there, that's what I do. <laughs> so be prepared, young man. A young, young woman. <laughs> Hope that does Craig, because it certainly doesn't do me <laughs> to be alone in bed at night. I usually need a teddy bear of Archie Gemmell. <laughs> or something along those lines. Great. Yeah, thanks, Craig. That was terrific. Um, uh, Chris, we we see you and we hear you on the box all the time doing your impersonations. You're, no. Yeah. Oh yes, we do. Well, we, you hear we, me? We yes. Hear you yes. We, and, and doing all, all your voiceovers and all. Trouble is, like if that. you saw me uh, a lot of the time, I I don't think I'd be working much anymore because that's you can't. It's do a the very faces. it's a delicate kind of thing. Well, no, it's a delicate. Well, I can sort of do uh, that and sort of parody. You know what I believe in my mind they look like, but I think it's a short sort of term kind of art form. Have said the really pretentious person. Um, <laughs> have you have you ever ever tried doing it with the faces as well? Oh yes, but I I didn't really I wouldn't really want to follow the the Mike Yarwood. Why not? Avenue because I don't know I just think once you've done something like that you can't really be used to do anything else. Do you know what I mean? Because that's you you become too familiar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, Benny like Hill. Mike Yarwood's become a, a sort of personality in his own right as Mike Yarwood, isn't it? Yes, and it, it, I think it sort of limits, in a sense, what you're, what you're going to be doing. So that's why I'm glad to have been, you know, behind the spitting image puppets and have maybe got to be sort of uh, small to uh, very small time, well known as David Coleman and Ronald Reagan. And you know? very rich with it. Um, Lev... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> How did you get out of the question like, who is this girl? Michael Parker's going to eat your heart out. <laughs> now, it's nice to be in bed with the... No, forget it. Do, do, you, do you do this all the time? Do you start slipping into other characters to sort of... as something to hide behind, as it were, like, like you just did then as Michael Parker? Is that something well, you find yourself doing at parties and things? Well, yes. I mean, at parties, it's different. You know, if you go to a certain friend's party who happens to be, you know, it's, you know a chap maybe who, uh, you know, is like a, a decent bloke who talks along these lines, you don't end up sort of going, hello, cool, blimey, hello, John, how are you? <laughs> Otherwise, you probably get something stuck severely between your mouth. So, you know, you just then tend to sort of... I mean, you don't walk in and say, hello, how are you? Yeah. Oh, no, don't. Don't, for God's sake, yeah. I mean, no, I know, I, yeah. And you don't start doing that stuff. Otherwise, you'll be in, you know, they will sort of go, who is this bloke? <laughs> Remove him now. You know, but so you just start to talk a little bit and just sort of mix, blend, you know, you blend in like with what's going on at the time without wanting to sound as if you're parodying the thing too much. Because if you start really talking as if it's not coming from you, then people will say he's just taking the mickey out of us. It is, it is useful though, surely. Whereas, yeah, I, I, if, I'm, if I go to a Slane's party, I don't walk up and go, hello. <laughs> I see you've moved from a GHI to a 325i. <laughs> Bloody good car. Yeah. <laughs> really is. Yeah, I test drive one the other day. I <laughs> magic ace car. Really is. Uh, I'm getting two next week. <laughs> Why do I need to? But you don't do that kind sure. of thing. You just sort of walk up and talk in a fairly, you know, don't you? I mean, you. You make sure, again, you're not parodying them and talk in a fairly proper way. I think it's quite a good idea to parody them, isn't it? Is there anyone who it's quite easy to take off? I mean, like uh, Ronnie Corbett, for example. Give me some Ronnie Corbett. Now, well, I, I knew you'd be there. Now, look, I... Oh, good heavens, no. What, what I'd like to do, in fact, is inform you about... I'm in bed. I'm in bed. What... what <laughs> my agent. What I'd like to do is inform you about what I'm doing fairly soon, and it's called Thingathong. You've got 10 seconds to tell us And where it. is it? Quickly. It's, it's at the Piccadilly, Piccadilly Theatre. Theatre. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. <laughs> and I'll be there. Ronnie Corbett, not Chris Barry, Ronnie Corbett, Thingathong. Be there. And it's a sponsored thing for the parents who can trust.